Okay guys, as promised, um, I've got Leonard here from Benzite Denim Developers. Um, now, the first plan was that I was going to like get him to go through all the details of all, all his jeans and tell us why he made these design decisions and so on and so forth, but he's actually done that already. So today we're just going to talk about basically how Leonard came into denim, how he started Benzite Denim Developers. Um, just the whole process that he's gone through over the last how many years? Uh, yeah, well, if you if you count all the years, then it was already since I was sixteen. So okay, so a long time ago. That's sixteen years ago already. Thirty-two now. We're getting old. Yeah. Well. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's go way back to when you were sixteen. What was your very first pair of jeans that like really grabbed you? The first pair of jeans that really grabbed me uh, has to be a Visu. Mm -hmm. um, Good choice. It was, um, I was still in high school and there were these kids wearing jeans with very high turn-ups and they showed a colorful edge at the, at, at the out seam and I really liked that look and went to a store in my hometown um, where they sold jeans like this. And uh, I didn't buy a pair of Avisu jeans back then. They were too expensive. Uh, I think they were, they were like 250 or 300 guilders back mm -hmm. then. Or was it euros? No, it was 2002, so that's going to be euros. Anyway, they were yeah, expensive. Yeah, they were expensive. <laughs> <laughs> not with the money I had at that Yeah, moment. not for a 16-year-old. Yeah, so, you. so that, that particular brand got me into got me interested into into the product but the very first pair that I bought then was a, a pair of pre-washed half salvage Lee ah, okay. 101Z so like the uh, James Dean jean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was it was a pre-wash I still worn it like like it's completely dead now I still have it though it's <laughs> safe in my in my archive in your it's, collection it's, yeah exactly <laughs> um, and I think soon after it was uh, when I saved up some money when I started to buy first Avisus, then other Japanese brands like uh, Studio Artisan or Denim, brands like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just somehow it 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 got me, you know, mm -hmm. I, the virus got me, and um, I was. Uh, just ins inspecting my own jeans, looking into like all these details and what made them special, and um, that learned me a lot mm -hmm. already. And that basically, I think, started this whole craze of where I am now. So it's interesting you say that this is back in two thousand two, right? That seems yeah. like earlier than when when the whole sort of Heritage itself is raw denim hit. Was this particularly just you're from Amsterdam originally, right? No, The Hague. The Hague, okay. Yeah. So was it particularly around about the Netherlands that this hit, or do you did you see it sort of more sort of in general? Well, there was not much known mm -hmm. about about it at the moment, at that time. Uh, there were for sure there were denim hats around. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time when when LVC was already doing things, but it was diff completely different from what they're doing now. It was it was difficult to find the right information. It mm -hmm. was only I think a couple of, couple of years later when it really started to peak uh, through forums. Yeah, you know, such as uh, Super Future, the Super Denim uh, forum, mm -hmm. and, and later My Nudies yeah. came uh, came as a competitor basically. But prior to that. Yeah, we had a visu. Mm -hmm. That that was it. Um, it was um, it, it was still the imported. Uh, so still the product, Japanese. The Japanese yeah. stuff that that was that was there. Uh, some people, um, yeah, found that out and and and, and knew there was it, this this was something to work on and uh, uh, yeah. So it was difficult, but then soon after, um, it it started to boom. Basically, mm -hmm. but I was pretty, pretty early, I would say. Um, why? I, I, I still don't know. It just, it just got me. Yeah. It, just, it just really got me. 
And that's maybe that's maybe something that you see in, in, in almost every every denim hat. If you you have guys who were, were just being introduced to the to the product to to the whole philosophy behind it. Mm -hmm. For example, wearing a pair of jeans for a year straight, not washing it. Um, I've been doing it for years now, over a decade. But when I see new like new people getting introduced to this, mm -hmm. uh, you see the same sort of reaction that that they that this sudden interest and yeah, yeah I, I got that. That that's what I got. Mm. Yeah, well, I've often wondered about that myself. Like, what was it about that first piece? Because it wasn't, it was just a complete chance find. When, when did you like start that, to, uh, to fill in love with the product? That is going back to 2012, I think. And I was just sort of being a cheap Scottish person. <laughs> I was breaking through the racks of TK Maxx, not looking for anything in particular. And actually, it was an Avisu jacket that I found. Also a visu. Yeah, also a visu. Um, it's funny that's like the gateway drug for both of us. Yeah. And probably we're probably not the only ones. No, 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 definitely not, <laughs> definitely not. And I recognised the the logo, and I recognised that this was, yeah, something somehow special. And but it was the feel of the denim because you've got like this racks and racks and racks of denim jackets, and you're going through, and you instantly like as soon as you put your hand on it. It had this different texture. Yeah. Um, and it just, from that moment, it just caught me. And then I remember, like, it was about 80 euros or something, which doesn't seem much now. That sounds spoiled, but, like, in comparison. But, like, at that time, it was a huge amount of money to spend on a piece of clothing. Yeah. But I just dropped the money on it, um, took it home, and then I was, like, reading in the hang tag, all the... I mean, this is, some, this is when Avisu became kind of the monster that it is just now. It was a made in China piece. I don't think it was really authentic selvage. It had a little bit of selvage ID here and there, but nothing. It wasn't a particularly special piece, but it had all the marketing in the hang tag. That's where I learned about raw denim, not washing your denim, yeah. selvage denim. And then that just sucked me in. Um, and I honestly, I can't say exactly why. Same as you. No, it's, 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 really difficult to determine that the thing it's yeah it's it, it strikes you somehow yeah it's I'm, literally you 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 are getting infected mm -hmm. and what triggers it is you know, usually a product move but yeah know. i mean there's all other things like behind it that it is fantastic having a piece of clothing that you can wear so often that you can put your na own narrative into that it becomes particularly yours as the ownership there but for me, that always came after the initial point of that fascination. Yeah. Uh, that sort of intangible thing we we're just talking about. Um, it has to do with, with quality as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's not only with denim. When you see something of high quality, you usually see the difference. You usually notice it. And, mm -hmm. and, and if, you are, if you have a little bit of feeling for that, you, yeah. you will be able to, to pick it out, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's the same with, with, with shopping for vintage. Mm -hmm. If you have a, have a rack full of Levi's jackets, you will immediately spot the big E from, mm -hmm. from, from the shoulder. Yeah. Because it's, it's, the fabric is different. Yeah. It's a quality thing that, that, yeah. that most probably... Although if I think back about my first experience with it was not the, really the quality. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought that it looked cool. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the edge, the colorful edge, which I la later learned that it was selvage. Mm -hmm. that, that was the thing that, that caught my eye. That was the aspirational thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I started reading about it and learning that what, it, what this was and where it came from. And I, I bought a book. Um, I think it was the uh, from, Cowboys, from Cowboys to Catwalks book. It's one of the oh, yeah. more famous ones. Yeah. Uh, tells you tells a great great uh, history about the product. Um, at least if you are new mm -hmm. to the um, to the whole thing, um, and then still you can have. It could be that you 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 find that 
specific detail interesting but then the whole story behind it doesn't interest you but that also was like oh wow well, mm -hmm. this is cool i want i want to know more about this yeah. and you know browsing on uh on the internet although um information was limited like i said it was yeah. pre was pre uh, uh the forum mm -hmm. age uh, when i got into the denim uh introduced to uh, to uh, salvage denim uh, but luckily, soon after it, yeah, it beat. It took, took, took off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was getting into it, the forums were riding high at that time, but the blogs were just starting to take off, yeah. and that's mostly where I got all my information. And things the forums were kind of, is either too much information or inaccessible because it was really, really bitchy in there. You asked a question, and you just got like a snide, a snide answer. So the blogs were where I got all of my, my information at that time. Um, blogs were basically a, a summary of all the stuff that you can find on the forums. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just better categorized, organized, and you still see the same information popping up on blogs that we already read about years ago, but yeah. it makes sense because it's, there's constantly new people exactly. getting introduced to it. Yeah. So. And actually sharing their enthusiasm with that as well. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. good. It's really, really good. Yeah. And each person's got a slightly different take in it, which I really like. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so from like that 16-year-old getting his first pair of raw denims, or salvage denims at least. Yeah. Um, what was the process for you sort of becoming a jeans designer and like throughout to make the brand? You know, how did this yeah. happen? Well, like I said, I was uh, after I bought my first pair, I, I bought a lot more um, from mainly Japanese brands. And it was about two years later when I was 18 I, that I realized that, okay, I wanted to have my own brand. I wanted to do this, this thing. Um, I, I didn't want to do it differently at that time. Uh, what I do now is, is slightly different than the Japanese brands do, but um, at that point, I just wanted to compete with these guys. Like, I want to have my own brand <laughs> with this type of look and quality and everything, like everything that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So I went to uh, Amfi, Amsterdam Fashion Institute, mm -hmm. uh, where I did the uh, the course of fashion management, which mm -hmm. is actually um, uh, focused on either uh, development and production or sales. And obviously, I did the development and production part. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, after after I graduated, I immediately uh, found my company uh, with a different idea uh, than just doing a brand. Mm -hmm. I uh, made private label collections for third parties. So. Mm -hmm. um, that means if like a store or a restaurant or whomever needs more than one pair of jeans, basically, <laughs> um, I could do that. Okay. But on the side, um, I was always busy, or at least in my head, busy with building up the BDD brand. Mm -hmm. It was already called Benzoc Denim Developers back then. Um, I started working for other brands as well. Um, after that, that private label thing didn't really work out. Um, yeah, it's the first time I've actually heard that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. It it didn't it didn't really work out. Um, so I started working as a de as a developer mm -hmm. for two other brands, um, but I always had my own brand on the side. It, it were small projects that I did, and it. It was in 2011 when I met my Japanese supplier, mm -hmm. it was in Bangkok. I was there for a, uh, I, I usually went there for two or three weeks to, um, to either um, create the samples in the factory or uh, check the production, or, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was usually one or, uh, two or three weeks that I stayed there. and. During one of these trips, uh, the guys from Japan Blue Group mm -hmm. were there to promote um, Momotaro. So Japan Blue Group, just to catch you guys up, 
They've got the Collect Mills. Yes. Uh, the first brand was Momotaro, then Japan Blue, Ju Blue, Japan Blue Jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they got Rompuya, that's a yeah, dying that's house. One. And they have some other brands within uh, uh, within the whole group now. Yeah. Yes, I think. Oh, yeah, Soul Life and yeah. Seto as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, uh, that, I think that must be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Japanese milling conglomerates that has everything in house, right? I'm not sure, but I would say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's I would say great. so. At least, at least they are operating on an international scale. Yeah. While most of the Japanese brands are really focused on their own market. Mm -hmm. But it was I was invited by uh, by a mutual friend, um, the the founder of Indigo Skin Jeans. Oh yeah. Gore. Mm -hmm. uh, and he introduced me to the people from Japan Blue Group. Uh, they had an event at a, at a big store somewhere in Bangkok and um, I had my plan ready f to launch the first main Japan jeans I had like the whole the whole plan was ready including even the patterns for the jeans uh, the detailing the designs the size specs um, I just needed a, a supplier mm -hmm. or a factory to to produce them and I had been trying to develop it with an with a with a different party uh prior to that but that didn't really work out it's really difficult to uh, to work with uh with japanese companies due to the the language barrier yeah of course not I'm everyone sure. not everyone speaks english yeah and well they are successful internationally also due to the fact that they are able to speak english yeah yeah. I mean, that's not the only thing, of course, but <laughs> it helps. It really does help. <laughs> it really helps. So I basically went to one of them um, and told him my story and, and my plans and asked him, like, do you guys also produce for other brands? Like, or do you only do your own brands? No, no, no. We also, we also help other brands out and we have the fabric mail. Uh, so we do a lot more than that. So, okay, can you introduce me to the guy who's taking care of that? Well, that would be me, he said. So, I got the right person. Okay, that was just in a spot of luck. Yeah, well, yeah. This, I mean, yeah, it was luck. Um, or fate or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I really believe in, in luck and in chances, but there's also this thing that you need to recognize them and you need to know when you have to grab them. Yeah. And I think that was a critical moment in the development of my career, mm -hmm. let's say, that I took that opportunity and just asked him. And well, he said, just send me what you have. And But he didn't realize I was basically ready to launch. Mm -hmm. almost. So he was happily surprised. And we started developing, got the first samples in um, by the end of 2012. Okay which I used to, uh, to show to shops, mm -hmm. uh, to get, get orders in. The collection was built, um, it was only three, three pairs of jeans. Uh, one, one didn't make it to production and a couple of t-shirts mm -hmm. that I did with a guy I knew also from uh, working with, um, working for these other brands and he's actually still my uh, my agent for the European line. Right. So yeah, he was also part of somehow part of that first collection. So it was only two jeans that that made it to production. And what were the fits that you had when you first started off? BD zero zero six, which was slim straight. That's the one that well, it's I'm still, wearing just now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's still the most popular fit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Till now. Mm -hmm. Till now. And the other one was the seven ten. Mm -hmm. You also have that one? Yeah. Was the green cast? Yeah. Yeah. And which one was the one that didn't make it? It was um it was an early version of uh the regular straight fit, which is now called seven oh seven. Okay, so that made it back into collection but later. Yeah, 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 but I tweaked it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, it, I was it was a, it, it was a new brand, small brand, so the stores that, that picked it up or actually was it was, I think, in 
only one store I've picked it up, to New Denim. Mm -hmm. So it's a good one to have, it's your first. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that, that's kind of a confirmation that even in those early days, you're, already, you're getting it right. Yeah. yeah, well, actually, I didn't change that much to the to the to the the product and the, mm -hmm. the styling and, and the constructions and everything. Not much. I mm -hmm. I recently we recently updated some of the labels from the inside, but other than that, it, the jeans still look the same. I mean, we still have one of the the, the zero zero six that was uh, part of the first collection was. 15.7 ounce uh, a deep indigo mm -hmm. it's still uh, part of the collection and remains still one of the the most popular styles yeah so yeah that's also also I think a way of how I have been building the collection mm -hmm. it's, it's meant as a I call it carryover collection mm -hmm. so um, a lot of fashion companies like releases new collections brand new collections every six months mm -hmm. and i try to do the opposite so i try to find a product that i know i can i will be able to sell this for as many years as possible and if you think of it i mean with a pair of jeans it makes sense to do it like yeah, that certainly you no know, if you have your fit right that's something what i learned from working in stores is that um, when these bigger brands they release like these new loads of new fits every season and then customer comes in is wearing wearing a pair of jeans he bought with us six months prior to that he says well I really love these jeans um, I want the the same one in a new fabric or in a new wash or new color whatever they say mm -hmm. and then you have to say like yeah well they don't really have this fit anymore they have something that is almost the same, mm -hmm. but you already lost the sale. Yeah. You know, and that is something that is really important for me to, to have in the collection. Don't change it too much. Mm -hmm. Try to um, create products that, that last for years. Yeah. Uh, I think this is super, super important because it builds up... Um, that's our trust with the customer, so they're always going to sort of come back to the brand. Yeah. Um, maybe you've got new stuff in, maybe you've got new denim in the same fit. They might want to try that out, but they are going to come back to the brand even after a year or two years. Yeah, they've or, had or these a new fabric yeah. in, in yeah. the same fit. Yeah. That happens more often. Yeah. I get a lot of returning customers who, who are happy with the fit mm -hmm. and then just saying, okay, I'm going to buy the exact same fit, but now in in the 14 ounce instead yeah. of the 16 ounce. I think that's super, super important in, especially the way that men actually shop. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, don't really want to put too much thought into it. It's like, okay, that is my gene now. Like, simple as yeah. that. Yeah, so that's, that's a clever way to, to build a brand. A couple of friends, they, they, they buy a new pair every year. Yeah. Always the same. One friend even buys the exact same pair every year. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I can kind of understand it. Yeah, um, it's like I'm, I'm, I love this one, and so from these from these first uh, two jeans and these t-shirts, the brand just developed slowly but surely. Yeah. Or how did the process go? So I, um, I was still doing it on the side. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that to really launch it, I needed more experience, more money as well. So I tried to slowly build it. After one year, I added two more styles mm -hmm. to the Made in Japan collection. Mm -hmm. I kept the t-shirts, so nothing nothing changed. Um, so it was just two, two more jeans added to the line. Those were um, the BDD006 in dark tone, mm -hmm. that's so out. That's the same for different denim. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's out now. And BDD016 in the grey blue. 016, is, that's a new fit to the... No, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a slim fit with slightly smaller bottom opening mm -hmm. and it has shorter back pockets. Right, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not 
that different from so, the 006. Yeah. You but still have it? Nice we still have it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, that was after a year, mm -hmm. then another year passed, added again to uh, two more uh, two more genes. So this is bringing us up to what, 2014, which is when I think I first became aware of the brand. 2015, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah around about then. That seems like a lot longer ago. <laughs> yeah, um, but maybe, maybe, maybe it was already earlier that you yeah, yeah. got to know the brand, but it was uh, it was six styles after, let's say, mm -hmm. two years, yeah, 2015. Okay. Yeah. And I think it was then during that time that, that I was really thinking about, okay, how, how can I, how can I grow this thing? How can I um, build it further to also be able to make make a living out of it because that was obviously the goal mm -hmm. you know? and with the the main Japan product um, at that time for me it was not possible it was too niche mm -hmm. so I got a lot of feedback from from people saying okay I really like it I really love what you do but I'm not gonna spend 300 euros on a pair of jeans or I don't have the money for it or whatever reason mm -hmm one might have um makes sense i mean oh, it's, it's a shitload yeah. of money to, yeah, yeah. to spend mean, on, on a pair of jeans um so I was, so i was thinking okay what, what what can i do about that basically offer a uh, a lower priced product mm -hmm. so um to do that but not um change anything on the current uh, products I I wanted to create a separate line within the brand mm -hmm. I stripped down the product from all the expensive details can you give us some examples of those hidden rivets mm -hmm. uh, extra line back pockets um, menu manually attached waistbands um, so things that could be considered superfluous basically yeah, but no, I mean there are seven different, seven different yarns in three different colors and two different thicknesses to be found in the main Japan jeans, and, and that means changing the threads out in the same machines. And yeah, or using a lot of machines. Multiple machines. Yeah, and and with the setup uh, in 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 the factory in Japan, it it's a, a labor intensive product. Mm -hmm. It takes much longer yeah. than the average pair of jeans to make. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did that. Um, I relocated the production to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people would think that Asia is cheap labor, but, but Japan, Japan no is, is not. It's it's more expensive to produce in Japan than in in, in the south of Europe. And then you've got all the shipping and everything else on top yeah, of that. Yeah, sure. Shipping, import fees, like to to get the product from Japan. To my doorstep, I just need to. We need to add another twenty percent just mm -hmm. on top of it, just to get it in. Mm -hmm. So, all those things explain uh, and justify the price. Um, but again, I mean, there's. I know. I understand that there are a lot of people who are willing to pay that price. Mm -hmm. So, relocating the production to Portugal, sourcing the fabrics from Italy. For the denim, I mainly use uh, Caniani fabrics, mm -hmm. which is one of the best denim mills in the world. Um, and kept the construction, of course, still like really tight, really clean, but only the necessary. Uh, there's also no uh, stitching on the back pocket, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's a clean product. It's mm -hmm. all about a good fit, uh, tight construction and a nice fabric. And all those factors combined, uh, made it possible to offer a pair of dry, uh, dry denim salvage jeans for a retail price of 179 euros. So that's almost like the half of it. Yeah. Yeah. And which is a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Yeah. 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 It's like it's all below 200 euro. That's uh, that's a very critical point. Mm -hmm. And um, I started. Uh, so I, like I said, I started 
uh, working on that in uh, 2015 and in 2016 a year later it was launched through a crowdfunder mm -hmm. that was so yeah crowdfunding was a was a really big uh, part of, of, of the building of the brand mm -hmm. uh, the first two jeans that I that I told you about and, and the couple of tops uh, were released through a crowdfunder and I did that every year so mm -hmm. when, was, when was your first one uh, 2013. Right, okay, that's yeah. when I would have been, been aware of the brand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wasn't that all done in Dutch? The video? I think so, yeah. Yeah, with subtitles. I think we did that in, with subtitles, yeah. And you had the long hair, looking scruffy. Yeah, well. Looking like a rock and roll down and designer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked somehow. <laughs> I seem to, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. So it was crowdfunding was a big part of the of the brand, and then this European made line was also launched through this to, through a crowdfunder, mm -hmm. and it, that was four. The collection was consisted of four pairs of jeans and six tops, four t-shirts, two sweaters, mm -hmm. and that really literally almost kickstarted the whole brand mm -hmm. in a whole. Um, and then every because sort of major up, upgrade to the brand was done through Kickstarter until when? Until then. Until then. That okay. was the last time I right. we did it. And um, the introduction of this European made line within the brand uh, made it possible for me to really fully focus on, on, on the brand. Mm -hmm. So no freelancing for other, other companies anymore. Um, and what was what I told you before is that um, I was trying to uh, create a product that was different from the from the main Japan line because I still did not want to do any concessions on the main Japan product. Mm -hmm. It has to be how it is. So that was like your dream jeans yeah. back when you were like 16 yeah, or 18 basically. years old. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The only difference I would say is that it's not, it's not really vintage inspired, but I take the combination of the Japanese craftsmanship, mm -hmm. which is heavily influenced by vintage detailing, combined with uh, European fits mm -hmm. or Western fits. Yeah. Or so some Our of the, body yeah, types, yeah, yeah. Which because is, that was something that the Japanese brands were not really doing. Yeah, anymore. yeah. I mean, obviously, they know how to create a pair of jeans for the Japanese body type, but for the Europe yeah. market, either I found uh, like perfect recreations of the 1955, 1947 fit or something, yeah, or something that didn't really only fit fitted a very small percentage of Europeans. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting you're saying how that developed. Yeah. So it was basically a Japanese, a Japanese product built for Europeans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I didn't want to change that. Nothing on that. So um, this this European made product uh, was different, and it was different enough um, to. Uh, uh, how do you say it? To help each other out? To complement? To complement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what I didn't realize, but at that time when I was developing it, but soon after when it got released, it helped me uh, sell the main Japan line. Okay. So it's like As an, an introduction into Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's like, an interesting development. Yeah. yeah. So... The goal is, of course, to get everyone in the main Japan jeans because that is that that's the ultimate product. The dead denim epitome. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> if if I can say that about my own product, <laughs> but you know what, man, just blow your own trumpet. <laughs> but I mean, the uh, this European made product is is like the first step mm. to get there. Your it's still product. it's still a product that that is really well built. Mm -hmm. uh, fabrics are really nice. Um, fits are the same as 
that's in the in the Japanese line. But you've not just got jeans in that line as well. That's just... no, that's that's something that 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 I also realized. Well, it, it was it was something I had sort of planned mm -hmm. um, to have the main Japan line as jeans only, and to create a more of a lifestyle uh, brand with the European made line. Okay. Uh, if we are so this is all about brand building basically it's not just yeah a selection of jeans or a collection of jeans yeah it's brand yeah building. yeah although I have to say the the, the focus is still um, very clearly on the jeans mm -hmm. and the t-shirts and the sweaters that we do um, are there to uh, yeah to 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 complete like the the look mm -hmm. and also those are products that are meant to be carried over season after season mm -hmm. so uh, it's similar with the jeans yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah, okay. yeah 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 and so i mean that's brought us pretty much up to date right where's the where's the future for bands like where's where's everything going um well there's going to well a lot <laughs> <laughs> a lot now at the moment we are we are we are busy uh, expanding internationally, mm -hmm. um, finding more doors, mm -hmm. um, creating awareness amongst denim geeks and other interested people mm -hmm. uh, who could be uh, uh, yeah who, do, who who don't know about the brand yet um, but could be interested in it. Mm -hmm. Um, the collection is growing rapidly. I mean, in 2016, when it launched the EU line, it had six items. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we are here now in Berlin, and we've just I've just started with the AW18 sale mm -hmm. season, and the collection is now 68 pieces. Whoa! Well, that includes the Jap Japan products, but still, that's quite an expansion. So it's 58. Yeah. That's quite an expansion. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, of half of it is, is jeans. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... These are various fits in, in various different denims. Yeah. Well, the, the both lines are now quite complete regarding fits. Mm -hmm. um, in both, there is a slim fit, a regular fit, and then... A third option, a tapered fit, mm -hmm. which falls in between the two. It's uh, the tapered fit is meant for guys uh, uh, with with uh, uh, like big upper thighs and um, yeah, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> who still want to rock a slim? Yeah, yeah. something loose. Yeah, and yeah. you can actually yeah. have movement in it. Yeah, but for example, I also really love that fit mm -hmm. because it's it has a bit more shape, and I have a bit more hip mm -hmm. than your average guy so I can wear them a little bit higher and it fits really mm -hmm. nicely so both lines are now um, uh, complete regarding fits mm -hmm. don't need any any more fits I mean you've got everything covered right? yeah for now we yeah. have so the main focus is now uh, adding new fabrics mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, there's a lot of lot of new stuff coming in uh, both in Japan line and European lines just Are you gonna give us a teaser. Uh well, yeah, sure. We have a really, really cool hemp blend fabric for the European made line. That's it. Is that going to jeans or is that going to tops? Jeans. Okay. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Still salvage? Of course. <laughs> Fifteen ounce. Fifteen okay. ounce denim. Mm -hmm. Seven seventy two percent cotton, twenty eight percent hemp. Okay. Yeah. How's the hand to it? Uh, dry. Yeah? Yeah, dry. And uh, when you wear and wash it, it will, uh, it will, it will loosen up mm -hmm. and becomes really flowy, let's say. Okay. So it's, and it's, much, it's a much durable fiber than, yeah. than cotton. Um, so it's going to yeah. last a lot, good long time. You can really put some fades into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically you can. And um, when you look at the surface of the fabric, it's these little naps of the hemp. Out. So it's quite like hairy, uh, for lack bit. of a better word. Yeah, a little bit. A little yeah, bit of, uh, similar to sugar cane, maybe. 
Ah, okay, that is yeah. interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So that's one cool uh, new addition we're mm -hmm. going to have. And yeah, loads, loads of other, loads of other things. Also, in the uh, another another thing, I want to want to want to sneak peek. Let's say. Oh, sneak peek! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, our first denim jacket. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, finally, after a lot of after people, a lot of time uh, of me going, ah, excuse me, when are you gonna? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not you, not you only. Like <laughs> so many people, and they're like, oh, okay, we're gonna do it. So, do you want to tell me the kind of the direction that you're going in? What type of? Yeah, cowboy style. Cowboy style. Like old cowboy cowboy style. Lee, think of 1930s Lee, but then in a, with a modern twist. Okay, that's going to be interesting. And when's that going to come out? All in August, uh, August or September, two thousand eighteen. So, so we've got some waiting to do, yeah. Yeah, but that's always the case. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I'm waiting this long. Fair enough. Yeah. Right, man. I think I mean we've covered basically everything. Uh, but I always like to ask: Is there like anything that's kind of fundamental that we've not covered so far? I mean, we've been talking for about 40 well, minutes could, or so. We, 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 we could continue talking for hours. Yeah, but I guess these guys don't have the patience no, for that. No, no. Oh. But so I think we, we covered the essential part now. And then if someone has any more questions, I mean... Yeah. Uh, you drop me a line either through the website or I'll put a link down below to... Or in the comments on YouTube. Head over to Leonard's website as well. Um, Ben's at denimdevelopers.com. Right? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. whatever, I'll put a link down below for that as well. And yeah, listen, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank I actually learned so some stuff that uh, I didn't know about the brand, so that's cool. Always new, new things. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks.